All right, so this is the uh, the backhander tournament, the oven backhander tournament. I have Deli all in round one, so we'll, you know, see how it goes. But it's a very curious tournament idea. All decks are available, as you can see, all, all rules on, all proper rules. And... Um... And the idea is you play a closed game and then you swap hands and play an open game. So I think the core question is, is it more costly to have weaker cards in an open or closed game? The initial strategy that came to mind for me was play just terrible cards in the closed game and try to undo the damage in the open game because in open, it is easier to target an opponent's weaknesses. Sadly, however, my strategy of five corner cards for the same corner, I said in a chat with Deli in it. So, might have to rethink that one. But also, I think it's worth noting, there's another thing where if someone wins the close 7-3 and the other person wins the open 6-4, overall score is what advances, total score. So the winner of the closed would advance 11 to 9 over the winner of the open. So I do not want to lose that badly if I'm going to lose. And if I lose, also Delhi is really good at defending. It might be hard to win the open game even if I saddle him with a significantly worse hand. So it is possible, I should probably center this a little more, it is possible I should be trying to win the closed and hold the open in the hopes I can win the closed with a bigger score. That's one idea. I'm really not sure. The score thing leans me towards valuing the open more, and just the general feature of being stuck with the hand the other person used um, makes me value the open a little more because I think it's easier to target things there. So I haven't actually built a hand yet. I'm going to do so when Deli takes the game. I'm going to go something kind of weak, maybe mid-levels, um, hopefully with tools to hit some things, but not... I don't want them to be cards that Delhi will enjoy using. So I'm thinking kind of two-directional cards, cards that can never be sweepers. Like, a 1188 has play versus a whole bunch of things, but is so dead versus part of the board. And I think cards like that might be the kind of cards I want to go with. Also because it's really hard, I think, to lose open games to someone using too many of those cards. Right? Using like one is fine. Um, I won a very important game. They tried was 14 semifinals with um, a 1881 in my hand. And it was in fact the card that completely saved me that game. It was the most annoying card for him in my hand because with the ones, it was the only thing he didn't have combo play against. That said, I think if you have more than one of those cards, it's just very hard to capture enough stuff in endgames of a lot of positions to get a win in open where they can dodge the card and play to its weak numbers. So I'm thinking if I run a bunch of those, those will be potentially hard for Delhi to handle in open, and nice for me to handle. They're also not the most dynamic cards. On the other hand, if I give him big corners and he gives me a hand that just can't cover those corners, I might just lose on the spot, and that's terrible. Another thought was, if we're trying to use low-level cards, but we're trying not to lose that badly, I should have cards that are really good at locking each other in, right? You know, like kind of the classic Homer level 4 hand is cards that really lock each other in. It has a 3672, it covers it with a 6263 and a 2636. Everything locks each other in cleanly. And maybe that's the kind of hand I want to go for, is something where... But I don't want to give him anything with synergy. I really don't. So I'm not sure. I don't want to give him three directional cards, but I also don't want to give him big corners, and I don't want to give him good cards, but I also don't want to lose really badly. So where does that leave me? I don't know. I kind of like the like 1188 type idea, but I do worry he'll give me cards that just cannot capture that and cannot fight that at all, and suddenly I'm giving him just 
big corners I can't deal with. You know, like I'm sitting on, you know, six, six, five, fives, and he's sitting on these eight, eights. Maybe six, six, five, five is a good card to go with. I don't think he'll give me many cards with like tens or nines on them. And that card can kind of be dead against other stuff, but have enough overall power. Maybe it can find use in the closed game. Maybe I'll throw some balanced directional cards, because those cards kind of suck at open, and they kind of suck at closed, but they might suck a little less at closed. That's an idea. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to pause the recording until he takes the game, and then we'll, uh, we'll look at the cards and see what we come up with. But I'm, I'm currently thinking 6-6-5-5s six, six, five, and one one eight eights are my strategy. <laughs> Yeah, it's very strange hand building. I sort of, maybe you start with like, what are cards you would just never use building a hand? And I would use 1188s and I would not use 6655s. Six, six, five, five. Um, though, of course, one of the best hands ever, a piggy hand, used a uh, 5656. Uh, five, six, five, six. Um, but it did it with very specific synergies in mind. I always want to say, and we're back when, we, when I come back, but like, for you, this is two seconds later. So, I don't know. I was thinking of the fire elemental dude, the 6655. That card's in my head, so I'm gonna pick it. Ah, it's 6556. Let's go with both. Let's go for fire boy and ice boy. I'll never see that coming. Because <laughs> a good strategy for closed is pick cards that are predictable once you've seen one that the other will emerge. Great strategy. Up here. Um, I guess the 1881s are probably level 6 cards. How do you lock them in though? The ones are hard to lock if I'm trying to get a tie. This might not be the way to go. 1777. Seven, seven. Oh, that is uses. Maybe the side to side 88s. Eight. Hmm. Nah. I think it's Dragonlance cards, right? Yeah. 1288? Maybe that's like a little worse. Don't want him to pick off random tens if he gave me a 10. Yeah, let's go 1288. Deep. Nah, the other one's covered by. No, we don't want to give him coverage. <laughs> we don't want to give him coverage. Um, ah, we actually have all the double numbers given to him anyway, so may as well. No, but we don't want to give him coverage. I don't want to give him any synergies. But I do want to have a lock in somewhere. 1881 has done well by me in the past. Let's do that. And so at this point, we throw some weird 6 5 out there, and he doesn't realize we have all corners for the same corner. Because we had two cards that looked a little different. So I'm going to pick something that can play off the sixes. Maybe a 3 6 7 2, 3 6 7 4. It's not quite what I want. Um, yeah, let's go bomb, and, oh man, this is so tricky. Make him think we're, we've gone super low level, we've only gone slightly low level. Let's try it. That that hit some of the sixes. It's just the first card I saw. Um,
Okay, we got second turn. Sorry I went completely silent there. I was uh, sending a message to pigs. I should have uh, spoken. I, I forgot I was still recording. All right, so we have a hand, and we have second turn on the closed, which is not the dream, obviously. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll see how this goes. It's on the wrong level. Well, I guess levels don't matter too much. Okay, we're building all this up. I'll make a note it's closed, but um, I'm going to try to get as many of the game records as I can here. Because I think watching the closed is interesting for this tournament. What a, what a curious concept. What a curious concept. I wonder what the highest level he gave me was. I give him one level six. That's all I will trust him with. Notably, um, if we use hands and we tie twice or have equal result after two games, we must make new hands. We cannot use the same hands again. Um, and not only can we not use the same hands again, we can use none of the same cards again. Uh, so my two, my two bears will be gone, my viking will be gone, my bomb will be gone, and my pure uh, will be gone. I don't know. Deli was looking for a card and couldn't find it. That's why he took a little longer to make the hand. It was on a different level than he was looking at. That makes me think it's a low-level card. You know, you, you usually remember what level the level 10s are. You know, sometimes you confuse 6s and 7s. Occasionally you confuse 3s and 4s, but it's really easy to confuse 1s, 2s, or 2s, 3s. So I'm going to guess low-level card. What do I want to see? I don't even know. You know, if he throws, like, Bite Bug in 5 and then just wrecks me with level 10s, I'm going to feel kind of bad about my decision to give him this hand, because if he, like, 7-3s me, even with a powerful hand, I'm not sure I could return that favor. I, I quite doubt I could. I have no idea here. It's going to be... Very interesting to see what happens. So. Here we are. What will happen? I had a recent effort to get Delhi banned. Did not work. So, you know, we have to play instead. Difficult. But I think a noble effort. I also have no idea what kind of starter we're going to see. What kind of starter do you play against unknown stuff? I think, like, weak corner or something weak in five. If he does a weak corner, I think it's very easy on this set to, like, have your build be kind of all cards for the same corner. So, you know, if he plays, like, 1, 1, 8, 8, and 7 or something, right, then I think he probably has a lot of power facing towards 7. It makes sense as a starter for that kind of hand, and it makes sense as a kind of hand he'd build. I don't think Delhi will pick that overly committed a hand, though. I think Delhi realizes that there's, there's points available to be won in the closed and is not going to give himself interesting. That's a kind of dynamic card. Lower level than some of my offerings. Do we have clear play offer? 6654 in 9 it gives me plus or plus wallish stuff in both squares. The 1188, or the 1881 and 1, I actually have good recaptures on either way, but the problem is its numbers are so high. I can never play next to it for fear of combo, or it's very risky and difficult to play next to it. I'm thinking 5, 1, 5, 2, and 7. I think this move has a few benefits. One, I have a same in 4, and a same is going to be the most effective way to not lose really badly. Two. It directs the game downwards. I'm going to want the game directed back downwards. And three, unlike 5-1, 5-2 in nine, which might be preferred, 
I can go in 8 with 1881 at some point and have something where I am not as combo susceptible. Well, if I start in 9, which my hand would probably prefer on the whole, if I have to go in 8, I am susceptible to combos. How susceptible is putting, say, 1881 to combos? Obviously not really to 7, but somewhat to 5 if I ever have to flip 5. That's actually a little difficult for my hand to put 5 after that, so it might not be scary. But I think, I think my focus should be getting down cards I can potentially lock in. And what I really want to see is if he goes in 3, and I think 3 is the most likely square, if he gives me play in either of 2 or 6, I will have 2 combo squares. I will have 4 as well as 2 or 6. And then I probably want to keep 4 alive. So maybe against most moves in 3 I go in 2 to try to keep 4 alive, because 4 is hopefully my clincher square. My game plan is he goes 3, I go 2, he goes 6, I go 1, 8, 8, 1, and 8, he goes 9, and I get to play 6, 6, 5, 4, and 4, and lock in enough that I have at least a tie, hopefully. Something like that is my game plan. Um, and it's also, if I do stuff like that, I'm locking in enough cards, I have enough cards supporting each other, it is hard to lose really badly. And I would like to uh, minimize losses. So, my game plan is synergy. Now, it kind of seems like we're going to both have hands that trend low level. So, it might be a battle of kind of like level 5 strength cards, right? Because 2763 obviously is a little weaker than level 5s, but like not that much. And 7643 is a level 5, but you also see that value at level 4. The 6655s five are level 5s. The 1881 is admittedly a level 6. Maybe I gave too much power there. Um, and the 5152 is a lower level, which hopefully my thinking with picking a lower level is A, potentially could give me some little synergy, so hopefully it doesn't give him too much, and B, um, will make him think I gave him all really low levels. So I kind of want him to be game planning against lower levels than I'm going to use. I want him to see this card. You know, you never know how much thinking other people do, right? But I'm seeing a level 5 and I'm thinking, okay, that's the kind of card strength he's giving me. He probably chucks one of the weaker cards in his hand if he's dropping in 5 to start. So the prop level hand is probably level 5 plus. Similarly, if he sees a level 2 from me, Maybe he thinks my hand is level 2 plus and likely to be lower, that he is giving me a stronger hand than I'm giving him. I don't know if that's true, right? My other cards are very much in the level 5 range, so if he's given me, like, a level 5, 6-ish hand, there may not be a big difference in strength. But it's going to give the appearance there is, and that might change how he handles this. For instance, if he thinks he's facing all low levels, I think he's more likely maybe to go in three, maybe think go for an X where you can capture everything. So the thing about X's with low numbers facing out is they're pretty easy for the first turn player to win, but they're hard for the first turn player to win by a lot because it's hard to have the combos hit extra things. So actually maybe he's more likely to go in a square like two or like six. I really don't want to see him go in four. I'd feel uncomfortable recapturing eight. I think like any of a 5, 6, or 7 facing out is pretty susceptible to combos on these levels. I'd probably stick to 5 facing out, because I think that's the least of. Um, but like as we see with the 7, 4, 3, 6, that has combo play against 7s, but a little against 6s as well with the 7, 3 part. And it's easy for cards that are in that vicinity to hit 6s and 7s. Um, and this is basically true as you go up levels. Sixes and sevens are reliably pretty comboable numbers. Maybe least so on level nine, and maybe probably not as much on level eight. But like on level ten, sixes and sevens are some of the most easily comboed cards. There are lots of cards with a ten and some sixes on it, or a ten and some sevens, 
There are cards with seven fours. There's just a lot going around that hits them. Okay. So that is an indicator he has given me a significantly more powerful hand than I have given him. However, it is not super easy for me to do stuff with that. I think the obvious move is something like 1881 and 8, or 2763 and 8. However, also note he has played two cards for the same corner. He may have given me a hand that really is over powered facing um, up left. He may have all up left facing cards, in which case eight would be a prob probably be a good move. What I'm really worried about with eight is if I go eight, he goes nine, I go four, and he has a way to combo in two. It's really unlikely to give me a counter combo in three. Maybe he has to worry about that enough that it's okay. But I'm worried. So if I was going to do it that way, if I'm going to go an 8, I want to go 1881. Um, specifically because if there is a combo back, um, I'm going to lock in at least 1 of 7 or 8. Also, it's a card I can put in 8 where I guess I never need to recapture in 9. So that's one idea. Um, if I was going completely insane, no, I don't have any crazy ideas like 2. I never want to go one, it incentivizes them to block four, four is my best square. Um, I don't think I want to go nine. If I went nine, it would be making a big call. It would be saying, all your cards are like X, four, three, Y, right? You're giving me very specifically this downright weakness. You're taking on this downright weakness. I don't think you can take this. But even if they have cards like that, there's a decent chance they can plus wall anything I'd put in nine. So I don't think that's very good. So I think 8 is possible, I think 4 is bad, I want to keep my combo squares alive, I think 1 is bad, I think 2 is bad, so it's 8 or 3. What would we do in 3? If we've read his weakness correctly, then I probably don't want like 6556 five, in 3, because if he has another 4-3 facing down right, he has an easy way to capture that that doesn't get comboed back. Should I be worried about that? I think I should. I'm gonna go eight. I'm gonna go eight. It does reveal a high level card, relatively. But I think I think at this point it's very clear I went lower levels than he did. Um, also, when I get the nine four three a, he's gonna have really good coverage of the ten, but the nine will dominate. So I'm kind of happy to see the nine four three a. For the database, let's write down moves also so I remember what cards he played. So 74365, 51537, 94386, 18818. Now, if he had all cards facing up left, would he have gone six? I feel like he might have gone two, unless he has some really clear synergy. Like if he has Sergeant Joe here or something like that, something like a 3A94 then that is nice play in 3 or 9 as a combo back card. And so maybe you do that if you have something like that combo. But if he has all up left cards, I think I think going in 6 maybe doesn't direct the game as well as going in 2 would. Now maybe he just doesn't have something that fits. I don't know how much I can read into it. Uh, this rule set is in my head. Very interesting. Trying to make reads. I think there's a good chance he has three or four cards that are similar and one card that is quite different. Now he's shown two cards that could take my 1881. I don't like that even though my hand came in as kind of like a bit weighted down right, I basically am never going to have captures in the top row. And that might be how I lose this game 7-3, which would be a disaster. I think losing it 6-4, given that I'm probably using weaker cards and got second turn, I think we can live with that. But I think losing it 7-3, the match is probably over. Tying it 5-5, I have the advantage, I think. Depends, though. It's possible I gave him cards that line up well. Um, but I think, like, if we tie this game... I 
think I'm favored going into game two because I think I'll have a better hand. Um, if I lose, win this game, great shape. If I lose this game, 6-4, he's favored, but I have a shot. If I lose it 7-3, I think we're done. If I lose 9-1, uh, then I might, you know, blitz the second match as quickly as I can. Because I don't think I'm going to win 9-1 or, you know, 8-2. Or it said 7-3, I think. I think a 7-3 loss would be pretty devastating here. But I do think it's hard to lose 7-3. I don't love moves in 8 in these J structures. Um, specifically because I think you often run into situations where they have a bunch of nice cards for the end game, but I think he doesn't here. That's part of the reason I'm happy about it. And I think you have a decent rate of losing specifically 6-4. I think you very rarely lose like 7-3 or get horribly punished in these positions, but you do lose quite a bit. And so I, I, I tend to prefer to play in squares like 3 against the J. Bet his thoughts have been very different than mine here, obviously, but I wonder I wonder on this set how much people are gonna try to read into hand. Seven six seven six. Alright. That's an interesting card to see. That again says higher levels. It sucks that I don't have three, but one thing that's really nice is it's hard for him to go in two for fear that I do have three. So I think we're just going to go in four. Um, if they go in three with high out facing, that kind of sucks for us. But I'll go in two, and I can't lose. Six, five, five, six, and I can't lose worse than six, four. If they go in two, that's scary for them to do. And I can lose seven, three there. No, oh, I can't. I'll have three cards. I'll play them. That's okay. I can only lose six, four there. And if they go in one, hopefully I can take it. I can take a nine. There's a chance their hand is nines. I can take a ten. There's a chance their hand is tens. You know, if they have something like three, four, nine, a, I can take that. If they have a six, I can take it. Can't take seven or eights, but it'll be five, five, and I can stick a seven facing to the right. And I can still only lose 6-4. So I think I have pretty good chances here. I think there's some winning chances if I get really lucky on the numbers. Um, pretty good tying chances. And I can't lose worse than 6-4. Because, importantly, I set up the same. And as Piggy says... Oh, what did Piggy say about same? Something about them being the most beautiful thing. But very eloquent. Much more eloquent than that. So, and it's hard for him to go in two. Like, two is the situation where we, unless we get incredibly lucky on a combo, meaning exactly an eight facing to the right. Um, or something that overpowers while comboing, but I, I think that's very unlikely. I guess the most likely version would be something like four, six, seven, three, he could definitely have in his hand. And then I'd just lose six, four. But, again, not the end of the world. That kind of card he could have in his hand here. Because he has picked some synergies, right? Like, 943A and 7676 certainly have synergistic properties. Um, yeah, I think there's... There's a chance. The question is, what are you willing to give someone? And I kind of think low-level cards that have synergies with each other aren't that impressive when, like, bigger numbers show up. Also, it looks like he's giving me a right weakness. I would guess he doesn't have cards that are good to the right. Um, the highest we've seen is a 6, but 7676 six, seven, six is much better going up and down and side to side for obvious reasons. And... The other two cards were very weak going to the right. So I think his hand looked like up left facing stuff, but I would now predict I don't think there's a card like 3A94 there. 
I think he's gonna give me at least one one strangeness. I also think this is a tough spot for him. Because, you know, if he has a card like 3883, right? It's pretty scary to put that in one. One gaps are easy to take, there's lots of plus walls, even if I have low levels. Um, you know, if you play 3883 and 1, you really risk losing. Of course, if you have that card in your hand, you probably stick whatever other cards you have in 3. And he has stuck his other card in 3. So we're going to take it. Uh, we're going to take it with the 6 facing out. He did have the pair, 3, 6, 7, 4, but the pair didn't have the plus wall in 2. Um, so 3, 6, 7, 4, 3. Now I thought he wouldn't have cards with right power. I think it's hard for him to pick off 6s. Again, the 3, 8, 8, 3 kills me, but... um. I do have a choice. I could play 2763. Two seven six three I think is more likely to tie and less likely to win. If I win, I think the match is over. Not because I don't think Delhi can do incredible things in open and Delhi won a crazy game versus Tezuka with low level with much lower level cards than Tezuka had recently. But I just, I think with the better hand, I should be favored by a bunch. Um, if we tie, tie is really good for me, though. 2763 really mitigates loss chances. But really raises winning chances. What do we think he has? If his hand's basically symmetrical, it's 3A94. And in fact, in that case, I would want to use 6556. Would Delhi go that much with Delhi have two pairs in close. I think actually maybe specifically here, because 7676 seven, plays so clearly off the sevens and sixes. I think he built a real hand. I think his last card is 3A94, and so I'm gonna go with the six. And pray. If he has 3A94, I'm going to feel clever. If he has, you know, 2552, five, I'm going to feel really sad. Not that that's a card you'd ever have here, right? Because presumably, if he uses 3, 6, 7, 4, and 3, he has something better to sweep with for 1, right? So it's hard for him to not have something that hits you. Um, ah, it wasn't Sergeant Joe, but it was 3A94. I forgot which card was which. Um, but we do avoid... We do avoid um, the the same wall there. We do correctly pick a hand, the or call a card. The dangers of um, the dangers of going predictable and closed hand building. This is actually really good practice for a PKC, which will be the next major, uh, because. Because, um, because I think a really good skill there for the close games is picking hands that, uh, that can't be cleanly read. Right. So we're on a must-win game to crunch this, but as, as Deli has said, it's going to be really hard for him to tie this. Right. Um, right. This is this is clearly a difficult situation. I think I think I made some good plays there. 
in the closed against, honestly, just like the clear best closed player on the site because we have the records, you know, we have GB after GB and he has played all of them and absolutely dominated them. Therefore, but and he is definitely a better close player than I am. But the question is, can we um, can we do better on the the kind of hand rule set decision playing for the close, right? And I think this time I did. And usually I probably don't, but uh, pleased with that. So seven four three six. What deck is that from? Seven four three six is Dragon Queen. I should tell them what cards the decks are from in my hand after this. But let's get these in first. Um, Dom FF8 level 4. What else did we have? 1881. Uh, was the Dragon Lance, I think. And level 6. Uh, what else did I have in my hand? Five and six, four, five, six, five from one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was already there. Cool. All right, we got first turn, and the big levels are pretty well covered, actually. The high numbers are fairly well covered. Fairly well. My first instinct is 3, 6, 7, 4, and 3. I guess that wasn't technically my first instinct, but my first instinct I'd like to admit to is 3, 6, 7, 4, and 3. It seems annoying to set up against. Maybe 2, 7, 6, 3, and 5 works. Hmm. The 1, 8, 8, 1 is going to be a problem. I can tell. Because some line like uh, 3, 6, 7, 4, and 3, 2, 7, 6, 3, and 5. I stick something in 2. They have 1, 8, 8, 1, and 1. I know combos back, so it's hard for me to force action. Hmm. I would like to see a starter that really feels like it has some punch to it, because obviously I should have big advantage here, right? I tried to saddle him with weakness, and I did. We succeeded. But now maybe the numbers don't quite line up. Which was, of course, his problem. I kind of want to just go 3A, 9, 4, and 1. No, they have big setups. I thought if the 9 is safe forever, then it might be reasonable to do it. Okay, what about just 9, 4, 3, A, and 9, though? Do they have ways to set up against the 9 end of it? Yeah, they kind of do. Like, 1, 8, 8, 1, and 3 is pretty annoying. Hmm. What was the move that was annoying after I go 3? I think it was 2, 7, 6, 3, and 5. It's interesting, because the, um, the 9, 4, 3, A's, and the 3, A, 9, 4, and the 7, 6, 7, 6 have, like, visibly good synergy. But I think in some ways they don't, because if the starter went 3-5 and I went 4, I make it side to side and the 7-6-7-6 seven, six, seven, six might be pretty unhappy. And if I go 8, the 9-4-3-As are not near as good, because they're very one-directional. I think I go 8, though. And I think that should be pretty good. So I think 3-7-6-4 and 3... Nothing he ever plays can be safe, 
and because the big cards have lone lowish numbers facing out, it's hard for him to have combos at the end. Basically, the only thing he can hit is like the up three on three eight nine four. I think we'll we'll do this one. I would have liked something that felt a little more game ending. I don't want to give him room to play because uh, he will play well. But he has no initial captures, so I really threaten like 7, 4, 3, 6, and 2. And then, even if my remaining cards aren't fantastic directionally, it's really hard not to imagine them sweeping. Also, as the board kind of fills, I think he'll have fewer fewer plus walls against my 10s. I think they're going to be better as the game goes on. Sort of the reason being, like, if 5 is left open, that is often a square they can land well. Um, but also, just as cards run out of his hand, he loses coverage of them. Yeah. 2, 7, 6, 3, and 5. I wish I could play, like, 7, 6, 7, 6, and 4 and just be like, haha, I'm safe, but it is very much not safe. Also, the sevens up don't play well on the left side against Bomb. There are ways to run into trouble there. I'm like thinking like Bomb 5. Oh, Bomb will be out of their hand if he goes 5, so I don't have to worry about that sweeping you. But 5 1 5 2 sweeps those anyway. Ah, this is going to be deeply embarrassing. Did good on the close. The thing is, like, if I can't convert this, the answer might be... If Delhi holds this, the answer might not be, I have deeply failed. It might be Delhi has done something really cool and impressive. So we're going to focus on that if I can't uh, convert this. Also, we have to see a move. And, like, 2, 7, 6, 3, and 5 gives me all kinds of options. I really should be able to find something that's, that's high pressure there. But I kind of don't see it. I don't see it. I think maybe I should be thinking more about seven than about eight. I'm not super enthused with any cards there, though. I could probably have to put seven, four, three, six there if I go there. My three captures are so clunky. I have these high number cards that turn into like out facing threes. No, I don't think I can do that. My first instinct was two. And two has some good benefits. But it has some downsides as well. If I go 2, and they go 6, and I go, say, 3, a 9, 4, and 1, and they go 9, that's actually safe to my hand if they have a 6 facing out. I guess to do that, they'd have to have gone 1, 8, 8, 1, and 6. Might be a big concession. Because if they go 1, 8, 8, 1, and 6, maybe I don't have to block 2. So maybe their hand doesn't have enough cards, right? Because if, um, if bomb and five, and I go seven, four, three, six, two, and they go six, five, five, six, and six, I can go safely in one, and they do not have safety in nine, and thus my remaining cards should be pretty good there. Yeah. 
Yeah. I think anything in 9 loses there. I take the 7676 and my 943A is a sufficient sweeper. Importantly, if 1881 goes in 7, 943A can take it from 4. Um, and if they go 1881 and 6, then if I went in... Then they have no threat in 3, so I might be able to go in 9 immediately, though they still have that covered. But I might be able to set up elsewhere. I'm not forced to go in 1 immediately to lock in. But I don't know if I'd have anywhere else to go. That's probably good enough. I probably can't beat 5 and 2. Um, also, if I go, uh, they go 5 and I go 2, they can go 1, 8, 8, 1, and 1, and that might just be really good as well. Yeah. Maybe I go one of the level 9s in 8 with 7676 seven, six as recapture. 7676 six, seven, is a decent recapture. Um, specifically with 3A94, I guess, but that's the card I'd want to keep in my hand more. Um, with my 7 down, anytime I recapture something in 8 from 9 with a 7 up, I have a problem with 5152. Five, I think 2763 and 5 is a good move. I do not think I am winning after it. That's my sad evaluation. You don't see it. That doesn't mean this move isn't good too, though. Now, importantly, if I go 943A and 6, they have no move in 2 that sets them up, and no move in 8 that sets them up. And if I was to go in 6, I would want the 943A out of my hand. So the question is, how good is a position for me like 943A and 6, they go 8, I go maybe 7, 4, 3, 6, and 2, make sure that's locked in? Is that a good position for me? I kind of think the answer is yes. I have this big same in 5, I have pretty good endgame sweepers. Pretty good endgame sweepers. Maybe it isn't enough. Maybe I go six, they go eight, I go two, they just go five, and one eight eight one's a problem. One eight eight one's a problem. They can't have more than two ah, uh, but I created a six or some well. Hmm. That's one idea. What did they get out of their hand? They gave up coverage of the sevens, and that's about it. So I am freer to put sevens over on the left. Is there a case for seven, six, seven, six in one? No, that's not safe. It's close to safe, but it is not safe. Hmm. Of course, also, if I go in, in 6, they can go in 2. They obviously don't have to go in 8. But I was thinking if they go 2, I go 8, and it's kind of analogous. It isn't always, because they can control some of my options in 8. For instance, if they put bomb in 2, then it's harder for me to play 7, 4, 3, 6, and 8. But if they go bomb in 2, I think I go 1. And that position's probably pretty good for me. Um, and if they go something else in two, then they don't control me going in eight as well. I feel like it's got to be nine, four, three, a, and six, but I also I'm really not confident it's a win. No oh, bomb and two, I have the combo against anyway. Other cards don't control a seven facing up. Oh. Three and nine, four, not quick and great. Uh, this is my shot. I feel like I gotta use one of my cards for that corner, especially with the game facing right. 
So how about 7436? Nah, that makes some cute setups. Alright, so we're going to play the conventional move. I don't see ideas. I briefly looked at like 1, 4, and 7, but for those to work, I think kind of ideas have to pop at you, and none did. So we're going to play conventionally, and uh, hope it's a difficult position. Um, if they play in 3, the only cards not comboable from 2, for me, are 6556 five, six, and 1881. Eight, eight, one. 1881 I can take from 1 and both cards are safe. So 6556 five, seems kind of the scariest. And I think there I might have 7436 and 4. Like it looks cool, right? I set up a plus and 5 and a same and 1. And I think something like that could be good. Um, so I think that's a scary move to make. And so I'm kind of thinking he's more likely to have to go 8. And I do think he has to go 8, because me going 7, 4, 3, 6, and 8 myself, if he hasn't, you know, if he goes somewhere weird like 7, seems dis disastrous. So I kind of think he's likely to go 8. And the question is, can I hit him hard enough in 2, or 7, or 4? Importantly, anything in 8 will overpower 9, so if I have combo threats, that's very scary. And I may have combo threats. Like, even if he goes 1881 in 8, that doesn't mean he's free from combo threats. For instance, 7676 six, and 4 sets up a plus and 5. Um, that probably has to be blocked. And notably, he'd have no way to capture that from 5. But I still don't think that line leads to anything for me. I think he does block 5. I go 7. Where do I go? If it goes bomb one, I don't have the captures. He didn't give me tri-directional cards. He gave me two directional cards, but not tri-directional. You know, if 3A94 was instead 1A96, or even like 2A95, just something that would pick up that 7, something that worked here as tri-directional, I'd have much better chances. Uh, I still think there's a good chance I win this game, uh, but I'm not at all confident I'm winning. What was the move order on the first one? 5, 7, 6, 8, 9, 4, 3, 2, 1. And my remaining card was bomb. 2, 7, 6, 3. Gotta post your games in the chat. Record keeping. Obviously, you have been watching the proper thing the whole way. But for tournament record keeping, I guess. Uh, I see why I had it over here. Because my window cuts off right next to my cards. So when I actually center it, this is actually centered. Um, it looks kind of uncentered. Huh. Well, we'll keep it uncentered. We're looking on something. I'm not. I think it's pretty hard here. I think basically anything he does, I have lots of options. So even if there are escapes here, they're really rough to find. Because often a move in two or eight here is pretty forcing, but here it never creates a threat in five, and a lot of his moves are combo susceptible. So that means he has to consider me blocking five, me blocking the paired square of two or eight, whichever one he doesn't occupy. Um, me playing next to his card, and me playing diagonally to his card. And in fact, if he uses something like 6654 and 8, um, I could also play 7676 and 1 with safety. So there's even moves in that odd square um, sometimes. But if he plays 6654 and 8, I am comboing him. I'm pretty confident. Maybe I'm not. 1881 combos back. And 4. So maybe I'm not. Maybe I will play in one if he goes eight. But the point is, I think there's, like, humans can calculate positions with, like, six moves left correctly and very well. 
but usually it's because we can spot a few key ideas. And I think here it is difficult to narrow down a few ideas. So I think I have good chances here, but given the hands, it felt like I should be coming in like 90 plus percent to win. And given the play so far, and how it's lined up, my starter didn't get me much. Um, like, I still have very good, I mean, totally strong winning chances, but he has largely decreased them. It wasn't the reply of my starter I was scared of, but I think it was a good one, and actually narrowed my options a lot more. So probably practically a reasonable choice, because the other one it's so hard to check a decent percentage of options, and here, like, I'm pretty likely to do what I've done. Alright, so he goes 6, 5, 5, 6, and 8. What does that give up? That gives up some coverage of 3A9, 4, though not completely. I have two captures of that, and both are comboed. The 3A9, 4 is really well covered by the 1881. And the line I was seeing that I thought was tying in these positions was 7, 4, 3, 6 in... in two, that they could just block five. And the problem is, and take that, and the problem is my seven, six, seven, six is kind of dead. Kind of dead. So if I go in two, and they block five, and don't flip me, and two of their cards don't flip me, then I can go seven, six, seven, six, and one, and they don't have a capture, and 3A94 is guaranteed captured. The score will be 5-5, five, five, I will win. So the only scary move in 5 for me is 6-6-5-4-5. Six, six, five, five. Which very annoyingly means bomb covers 3A94 and 1. But... Uh, no, not quite. I was thinking, but there's an upside. If I uh, I do threaten a same wall, I can play the same wall in four. And I go up six four, but they just play a double capture in one, and they're fine. And I could also start with Odin Raiden in seven, with the idea of three and nine four as a sweeper. They have to block four, but they can block four with either card, and they flip Odin Ride, and then go up 7-3. So I think 7, 4, 3, 6, and 2 is just a tie. I think they block 5. I don't think 7, 4, 3, 6, and 4 does very much. If I block five immediately, um, they have so many options. If I go seven, they have plus walls against everything. It's very annoying. But I have a plus back in five with seven, four, three, six. So can I go 3A9, 4, and 7? I go up 6, 4. That's how you're populating. I go up 6-4. If they combo me, I plus back in 5 and I win. If they go in 5 with 1-8-8-1, they make it 5-5. Five, five. I don't have anything there, do I? No. Damn it, Deli. Too good. Too good. Seven, four, three, six, and seven. Um, my point is, if they take with bomb, I have seven, six, seven, six, and five, and the plus is very good for me. 
if they take with 1881. Oh, it's not ties. I, if they take with 1881, I have 3A94 in one myself. And 7676 is actually a really nice sweeper in the end game there. Okay. 7, 4, 3, 6, and 7. I don't think they can take. They can block 5. They should probably just block 5. They can also go in two, but I don't think they should go in two. I think that's my best chance, but they just block five. Four doesn't do anything. Seven, four, three, six, and two, they block five. Specifically six, six, five, four, and five. Is there any chance he misses that? No. Alright, so I think I'm going to go 7. I haven't checked it as thoroughly, so it is possible... It's possible I can lose there? Get too risky. I don't think so. Uh, it seems so easy to tie there, too. Alright, maybe I'll just go in on two. What a jerk Kelly is. That's what we playing here. Same in five threat makes it hard for him to go wrong here. I'm gonna turn on a fan. I hope that doesn't kill the sound. We'll see. I'm gonna watch the sound bar. Ah, uh, looks like you can't hear it. Okay, okay, we'll suffer through the heat. Interesting games, of course, but I was hyped to get that tie in game one. And now we need a new plan. <laughs> and hopefully not a predictable one. The weird thing about an A943 versus like a 7643 is basically the A and 9 win, right? If they ever come head to head. But the A and 9 don't, like, win by more than a 9 and an 8 would, right? And, you know, obviously the 7 has to line up, but they don't really win by that much more than an 8 and a 7. So because the backside of his high-level cards looks like a low-level card, the ones he gave me, I didn't end up finding particularly good use for them. Our one hope is that he's scared off of going 6, 6, 5, 4, and 5, because my combo power is quite powerful. Um, so, yeah, yeah, well played, well played. I think he handled this very well. I think it was tough to find a good move in 2 or 8, and he found one. <clears throat> As I said, I thought like my winning chances had greatly decreased, but I still had pretty good winning chances, 
and I appear not to have. I do beat any move in four. I believe I beat maybe not even any move in one. Um, probably beat seven. Alright, he picks up six, six, five, four. I have written in six, six, five, four, five. I guess other moves are technically allowed, but I would be very surprised, yeah. No. Mm -hmm. And this was the line we considered. And we don't have it. Three A nine four and four. I go up six four, but they have the double capture in one. They don't combo specifically. Avoid comboing. They take with exactly bomb, and they tie because I flip back, but it doesn't flip anything extra. So it's five five. And if I go Odin Raiden and seven, they just take me. Either way. So I should probably do the one in four. On the off chance he ridiculously combos me, I guess. Yeah. Odd seem rather low. I'm more comfortable playing in seven. That's what I'd rather do. If the odds are uh, zero percent of winning either way. I'd rather do the one that feels more thematic to me. Yeah. Ah, four is cute. Why am I spending so long on this? It's because I'm vaguely afraid that four actually loses and I just can't see things, but uh, it does not. Three, nine, eight, six, two, five, four, one, seven. Couldn't convert. Very nicely played by Delhi. Put the rest moves in the database. Um, four, seven, six, three, one, seven, six, seven, six, seven, and one, eight, eight, one. one eight, five, five. All right. So we need to use all new cards. I divide into another video? Probably. This has been going on an hour. So we'll call it a day. Uh, congrats to Delhi. Um, and uh, 